Today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Brilliant. Do you ever watch one of these videos and think, dang, I wish I could learn exactly what you're talking about, that programming language, that piece of computer science? Well, there's a free and easy way to learn it, and it's thanks to our friends over at Brilliant, who, by the way, are the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science effectively. Ladies and gentlemen, are you an interactive learner? Well, Brilliant can work with you and design a course specifically tailored to your pace of learning. Whether you're a fast learner or a slow learner, it doesn't matter. Don't feel shame. This is a complicated series of subjects, and if you can be guided through it interactively in a fun way, then what's better than that? You won't feel like a fish out of water. Especially when it comes to things like computer programming or writing in code, they actually do have courses like Thinking in Code, which allows you to design simple programs with real-world uh, appliances. Have you ever wanted to maybe make a mapping application? Did you ever want to work in a situation where you could design a program to respond to certain messages automatically? Well, Brilliant will help you guide through it. So if you want to try everything Brilliant has and up your knowledge game, check out brilliant.org slash SOG for a full 30 days free. Head on over now and be the first 200 people to sign up using our link and get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. That said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the video. Hey there, buddy pal! <laughs> I'm installing the hardest system on my computer today. I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, I, I like to watch the world burn. I deleted everything off of my computer five minutes ago. Okay, I, I raised it all to the ground just because I wanted to reinstall my system, simply because I wanted to retouch up some things. So I figured, why not sit back, relax, and do it with you? Ladies and gentlemen, you uh, probably know that I'm a Linux user, okay? Now you might be like, whoa, Muda Linux is for wizards, okay? It's for virgins. I know you've seen the installing web browser meme, and I know that there's a lot of gatekeepers in Linux, okay? Now, Arch Linux is something I know you've heard, okay? Because like veganism, the people behind it just cannot shut up about it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Arch Linux users will just let you know that they're Arch Linux people, okay? They'll just tell you. Even if you're at your grandmother's funeral, somebody from the other goddamn room will come by and just, you know, tap you on the shoulder and be like, hey, buddy, I use Arch. Now, uh, elitists like to gatekeep this, so I wanted to go back and show you how anybody, you included, if you have no idea how to use Linux at all, you can go from the command line, you know, this, 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 like, this blank piece of hacker mumbo jumbo, to this. And uh, now, if you're a Linux person, I'll be right, I'll be up front and say it. Just download Linux Mint, okay? It's the only Linux distribution you need. If you're brand new, it installs in like five minutes, and it's packed with everything a growing boy or girl needs. But today, I'm going to show you Arch. Now, there's harder versions of Linux, like Gen 2, uh, if you just feel like compiling everything from source. There's also Linux from scratch, okay? Let, let, you know, if you have two options to torture somebody, waterboarding, or making them do Linux from scratch. Linux from scratch is usually the more, uh, you know, evil thing. I believe somewhere in the United Nations, they probably written it as like, you know, against, uh, what is it like, a, it, it's cruel and very unusual punishment. So first things first, how do you install Arch Linux? Now the easiest way to do it is to go use the Arch install script, okay? It's, it's designed for babies, follow the list, go through it, okay? It, it's got probably the worst UI design of anything Linux related, but then again, this is Linux we're talking about. Now I'm gonna show you how to go to Arch. So you go to their website, you download the ISO file like you see right here, the freshest one. You download a tool like Belena Etcher or Rufus, and you make sure you have a flash drive. You plug the flash drive into your computer, link Belena to your ISO file, and you flash the drive, and you're ready to go! So now imagine you got a computer sitting around, okay? You want to find a fresh, empty USB port. I did it! Now you hit power on your computer and you make sure, first things first, smash that delete F12 whatever key on your keyboard. See, first things first is going into the BIOS screen, okay? To just make sure you're sitting in the right places. So here we go, we're on our screen. If we hit delete a few too many times, you'll get me into the UEFI BIOS setting. Again, this can be very different for every individual person. Now, generally in this BIOS screen, if you want to enable things like virtualization, you can find that. If you want to enable things like UEFI or specialized prompt, you can do it right from here. But the reason why I went in here is to click on the boot menu. So you click F8, it might be different for you. But see where it says flash drive? So it says Lexar USB flash drive. That's my flash drive with Arch Linux prepared. So as long as I hit enter on this one, you'll probably notice, whoa, 
What is this? The GNU Grub? So this is your first phase, okay? Actually booting in. Now, it's got some options. You can run a memory test, UEFI shell, but you want to click on the first option, okay? You just click Arch Linux Install Medium x86 64 UEFI. Oh, look at those OKs. See, this is Arch booting up, okay? This is what people love to see, the status screens right here. Now, uh, to understand, first things first, we're gonna make sure we have an actual internet connection because without the internet, we're not gonna be able to install this, okay? At least not in the way that I'm showing you. So the first things first is you go to ping www.google.com. Now, if you're noticing, whoa, I'm getting 64 bytes back and forth, hit control C and stop this right there. As long as you're getting actual bytes back, that means that you have an active internet connection. So again, we know we're connected to the internet. Now, the other thing to know is, are we booted into EFI, UEFI mode? If we're not, then we need to go back to our BIOS and change a few things around. So this is quite easy to ask. So you do EFI var, okay, and then dash L. Whoa, look at all these things right here, Muda, what do they mean? Uh, listen, it's just here to tell you that yes, you are booted into the UEFI mode, so congratulations. Now the next thing to do is make sure you remember the clear command, just so you can make sure you clear some of this obnoxious stuff first. Now, if you type in LSBLK, list block. Now, when you list your block LSBLK, you'll notice you have SDA, SDB, SDC, SDD. Now, SDA, B, C, and D are actually each individual piece of hardware. So there are different drives on your system. Hard drives, NVMe, SSDs, whatever. Now, underneath those are trees. So SDA 1 and 2, SDB 1, 2, 3, and 4. These are all different partitions. Now, here's where you're going to want to identify which drive is yours. Now, I know SDB is my drive. It's my previous Linux partition. I'm going to be working with that. But generally, in this case, it's like when you're installing Windows and it asks you which drive you want to go with. It's drive 0, 1, 2, 3. Roughly the same concept. Once you figure out what is your drive, write that down somewhere. So I know for me it's SDB. So I'm gonna make sure I remember it. Again, you cannot mess up the lettering going forward. That can cause some catastrophic issues to your system. So just know what you're doing. And again, do this calmly, okay? No need to rush. Now here you're gonna do G-Disk, which is where we're going to be opening up a ability to clear that one specific hard drive, get it prepared for partitioning, which means we split up the drive and get it ready to install Linux. Now gdisk, in this case, we're going to be doing gdisk space slash dev and slash sdb. Again, you might be different. I'm going sdb because that's the drive I'm installing to. So once you hit enter, it's going to ask you for a bunch of uh, different commands. Here we're going to be doing x for expert, and then we're going to be doing z to zap, and it's going to say, hey, you're about to wipe out the GPT, which is the partition table. Hit yeah. And then, whoa, are you sure you want to blank things out? Everything might be destroyed. Hell yeah, brother, Br wipe it. Now at this point, your drive is clear and you're ready to go to the next step, which is partitioning. Now here you're going to be using something known as CG disk. It's a easier uh, you know, partitioning tool. So do slash dev slash SDB. And before we go into it, just to show you what happened on my previous drive, if you do LSBLK, you'll notice SDB doesn't even have partitions. It's completely clear. So again, do CG disk slash dev slash SDB. And once you're in here, it'll give you a warning. Just hit enter to continue. It'll be like, whoa, you've got 931 gigs of that free space. So this is where you're going to be doing things in a different way. We're going to be separating our root partition, which is where our operating system is stored. And then the home partition, which is where our actual files are going to be stored totally separately, okay? Generally, you can keep your operating system and your home in one partition, but for security reasons, we'll just split them up. Now, inside new, we're gonna highlight new using our keyboard, hit enter, and it's gonna ask you how much you want your first sector to be. So it's gonna say default, just leave it blank. And inside here, we're going to give it a size. Now, this is going to be our boot drive, okay? This is where we're gonna be storing our boot information. So this doesn't need to be that big, just do 1024, which is one gigabyte, and do M, lowercase i, and then B, all right, as in capital. Once you hit enter, it's going to ask you what type of file system you want. Because this is our boot drive, we're gonna be doing EF00. Hit enter, and then of course, it's gonna ask you what you wanna name it. And we're gonna call this boot. So now you'll notice, whoa, you've got a thousand gigabytes, that's what we made. And then you'll notice I have a thousand kilobytes. I figured out that this was actually um, just kind of how the GPT partitioning table works, okay? The Arch Linux uh, wiki does a better job of describing it, but don't freak out if you have that extra space sitting there. 
Now the next thing we're going to be making is swap memory, okay? Now swap memory is kind of like the hibernation file or the paging file in a Windows system, right? Basically, if you run out of RAM, what your programs will do is start moving things into swap as temporary memory, so the system doesn't just freeze. Now, I have 128 gigs of RAM in this system. I still am going to make swap. You want swap memory. Don't just sit there and pretend I got enough RAM, I'm fine. Some programs will just use swap, okay? The other reality of it is, is that um, if you're going to be hibernating, you'll need swap to obviously move stuff from your RAM to your drive. Now, how much swap are we going to be doing here? There's a careful mathematical equation. I'm just going to be giving myself like 16 gigabytes because I never really use swap. It's there for very emergency reasons. So again, in this case, we're going to be hitting enter, you know, as a first sector. It's the size and sector. I'm going to be doing 16 and then I'm going to be doing capital G, I and capital B, lowercase i, just to create a 16 gig swap space. Now here we're going to be giving it the swap code, which is 8200, and we're gonna call this swap. So at this moment in time, it tells you that's Linux swap right there. So now we're gonna create another sector, and this is gonna be our boot partition. Now Arch Linux will give you a healthy amount of what it needs for root. I'm going to give it 40 gigs. I think the actual amount is like 15 to 20. I have plenty of space. I'm gonna give it 40 gigabytes of space for my operating system. So hit first sector as default. The second sector, 40, capital G, lowercase i, B, 40 gigabytes. And then of course, here it's gonna ask you your current type. It's 8300, so just hit enter. Not boot, root. They rhyme, but you know, different words. So now your last space is 874 gigs. So here just hit new. This is gonna be our home partition, so just hit enter for default. The size and sector, hit enter. It's just gonna use the rest of your space up. 8300, hit enter, and just call this home. So at this moment in time, you'll have 711 kilobytes of free space. It's okay, we've got four, tar four partitions, we're fine. Now at this moment, we're gonna scroll all the way using the arrow keys to right at the bottom, and hit enter, and it's gonna be like, hey, you wanna do this? Just type yes and operation completed successfully. So now at this point, just hit quit, and then type in the words clear. So now if you do lsblk, you'll notice, whoa, SDB's got all those partitions ready to go, but they haven't been formatted, so let's format them. All right, boys, we're gonna be typing some moon runes, okay? So our boot partition needs to be in FAT32, because booting requires us to use a very, very, like, common readable partition scheme. None of that fancy shit. So do make, uh, so first thing you wanna do make FS for file system, and then you wanna do FAT, which is file allocation table, okay? I'm not literally being fat phobic here. Uh, dash, capital F, 32, for FAT32, and then you wanna type in dev, and then SDB1, because that's our one gig partition. Uh, okay, that's already done. Now, next thing to do is making swap. So do MK swap, and then do slash dev, slash SDB2 which is our 16 gig partition. Well, we just did it. It even wiped old swap signatures. Now you wanna do swap on <laughs> slash dev sdb2, and then swap has been enabled. Now the last two partitions we're gonna be doing in extended four, which is a Linux partitioning scheme. So for this, we're gonna do make fs, or not make fat, make fs dot ext4 slash dev slash sdb three, okay? Just for our 40 gig partition. It's gonna be like, hey, wait, it contains a file system. Just hit yes, if so. And then of course, do another one, which is uh, make, uh, or you can press up. So make fs.ext4 and just do dev sdb4, okay? And at this point, if it asks you, hey, there is a file system, just hit yes. It's probably reading off old history. And here it's gonna take a little bit of time because it's a bigger block, but we're already done. Now, if I hit clear and then LSBLK, you'll notice, whoa, those things are now partitions. One of them is even swap. So now it's time to start making mounts, pointing it, and then actually installing Linux. So to get our Linux installation installed, we're going to be doing mount, dev, and then SDB3, and then we're going to be doing space slash MNT, and we're putting it into the mount folder here. Now, the next point, we're gonna be doing make directory, all right, and we're going to be doing mount, and then slash boot, so mnt slash boot. Then we're gonna make another directory and we're gonna do it mnt slash home. And then of course, we're going to be doing mount dev sdb1, which is, if you remember, our one gig boot directory. And that's gonna be going into mnt 
and you guessed it, slash boot, the directory we just made above. Then we're gonna be doing mount dev sdb uh, four, and then we're gonna be, because that's our home directory, our largest uh, partition, slash mnt slash home. So once that's done, do lsblk, and you'll notice, whoa, things are actually linking to places. So these are the mount points. So our sdb1, our one gig, goes to our boot directory, sdb2 is swap, sdb3 is the mounting, sdb4 is mounting, and then the home directory. So again, this is if you're starting to make sense of it, this is where we're telling the system to install key components and what will be the final piece of the puzzle, how our system will be structured. So now it's time to update the mirror list, which is basically the list of servers around the world that contain the packages to update our system. So we're gonna do, what we're gonna be doing is typing in CP for copy, and we're gonna be doing uh, slash Etsy, ETC, slash Pacman, and then you can kind of press tab to autocomplete things. So pacman.d slash mirror list. Now here we're gonna have another space and we're gonna to go to slash Etsy and then we're gonna do Pacman D and then we're gonna be doing mirror list dot backup. What this does is it creates a backup file. So in case we screw something up, we can just copy the backup as the original mirror list. So the same command, but inversed. Now, one of the things that we're gonna be needing is rank mirrors, but if you've noticed, we don't have access to rank mirrors. So we're gonna install this because for some reason, Arch Linux has locked this behind a uh, package. We're gonna do sudo pacman-s. This is gonna be a command you're gonna to need to know. This is how you install packages onto this version of Linux with the Arch-like package management system. So dash s, and you're gonna be typing in pacman contrib, okay? So of course, if you've noticed, huh. If you get an error like I just did, do sudo pacman dash sy your first time, and then pacman contrib. Just because the first time you need to download uh, you know, the you need to download the package list and then just hit yes, hit enter, and you're good to go. Now here is where you're going to be actually uh, ranking the mirrors by top six so we get the best download speeds. So do rank mirrors, right? And this is the command. And then do dash n, and then you wanna type in six for the top ones. And of course, in this situation, you're gonna do etsy pacman.d slash mirror list. And in this case, you want to do the backup, and then you want to do one arrow, which is, you know, to the, the greater than arrow. And then you want to do slash Etsy, Pacman D, mirror list, okay? So once you hit enter, you'll notice, whoa, it's just blinking. Did the system freeze? No, it's actually doing the whole network job. It's going to take a couple minutes. So sit back, sip some tea, and then we'll move on to the next step. Whoa, we're done. So as long as you see that Arch ISO asking you, you can type stuff in, you're good to go. Basically the system is done. I'm gonna open up the mirror list to show you what's happened. So opening up the mirror list over here, you see that I just generated a new list and it's picked the best servers possible for me. Again, yours will be different, mine will be different just because we live in different parts of the world. Now to give you the magic sauce of installing, we're gonna type in pack strap. All right, strap on your seat belts, buckos. Dash capital K and you're gonna do slash MNT. You're gonna do, uh, you're gonna do according to the actual installation guide. Yes, I am looking at the guide myself because things do change. Type in base, Linux, because you need the kernel. Linux firmware, because you wanna actually use your hardware underneath Linux, let's not pretend. And then of course, the last but not least, if you're gonna be working with you know development kind of stuff, do base dash devil and just hit enter. Now, of course, it'll generate the new key ring. It'll just start downloading Linux. And bam, well, this is how it works, boys and girls, right in front of you. If you brought in your friends to your house and they'd be like, what are you, hacking the government there? No, you're just installing Linux, buckos. And that's pretty much it. So we got 146 packages, and it shouldn't really take us that long to do. And there it is, buckos, in literally uh, a minute, we've installed uh, pretty much all of Linux right there, at least the basic stuff to start and boot in. We still got a lot more to do, so buckle in. So now that you're done pretty much over here, we need to create an fstap file so our hard drives are recognized and allocated as we're booting. So do gen fstab, all right, and then you're gonna do dash capital U, again, lowercases and uppercases, very important. Dash lowercase p, and then slash mnt, and then two arrows to the right, and then you're gonna be doing slash mnt, slash etsy, slash fstab. Okay, so as you hit enter, you're done. You've generated the F stab. Now it's time to actually read what it did. So do nano, MNT, Etsy, 
F stab. Nano is the um, the uh, text editor that you're using to manipulate files in the command shell. So hit enter, and you'll notice that SDB 3, 1, 4, and 2 are all written. Everything here looks good so far. So again, hit Control X to just close out of here for now. So now we're going to be booting into our installation underneath this drive, just so we can do the final things before we boot into it for good. So do arch ch root, and then do uh, slash mnt. And again, once you start seeing these brackets, you're actually in your new installation. So now you notice that I can't even open up nano. And that's because in my installation, I don't have the package installed. So do sudo pacman dash s and do nano and also do bash dash completion just to make our life a little easier. Hit yes. And now we've downloaded two programs that we can use. So now we need to enable our uh, locales. We need to generate them. So do slash uh, or nano slash etsy and then do locale.gen. So inside here, you'll notice a bunch of these locales are here. Now, this is where you wanna find the locale for where you live. I live in the United States. I'm gonna go with US UTF minus eight, okay? So in this situation, you find out what your code is, hit control W for search, and then you type in, for instance, for me, it's N underscore US, and then uh, dot UTF dash eight, okay? So it'll scroll all the way down to this specific uh, line. Now you notice those little uh, those little pound signs? Those are what we use to comment out words from a list. So generally when a computer is looking through a file, if it notices that pound symbol, it'll just say, oh shit, I, I, I'm not supposed to, it'll basically be invisible to the scope of the computer. Now it won't, since I got rid of it. Now in this moment in time, hit control X, it'll say save modified buffer. Hit yes to save the file, hit enter, and you're good to go. Now here's where we're gonna be doing a locale gen. So type in locale dash gen, and then it'll just generate your locale for you. Once it, It'll take like literally a second. And then of course you wanna just echo it and create a language out of it. So in this case, you wanna do echo capital lang equal n underscore us dot utf minus eight. And then of course, one arrow key to the right, and you wanna do etsy locale and then con. And then you want to type in export, okay, lang, and then you want to do equals n underscore, again, very important that you get the uh, capitals all right. So n us utf minus eight. Now it's time to get our time zones ready to go. And this is where things are going to be different. So to understand, you want to type in ls as list, and then you want to do slash user share zone info. Now in this case, uh, ladies and gentlemen, underneath zone info, just an extra slash, you'll notice you've got a bunch of different areas to go off of, right? Now I'm going to be doing just Eastern US, just because for me, Toronto, New York, same time, these can be modified in the GUI anyways, but just to make it easier for me, I'm gonna be doing this with you know Toronto time or New York time. Actually, we'll do it with Toronto time just to show you. So you see in this list where it says Canada, Type in C, A, N, hit tab to autocomplete, and then hit tab again to see what's inside here. And then of course you'll notice, oh, I've got Eastern, which is where I live, okay? Eastern Standard Time. Now if you type in Eastern, all right, and before you hit enter, go all the way back to where it says LS. Now inside over here, you wanna do LN, just get rid of the LS, do LN space dash S, and you're gonna be linking something symbolically, kind of like a shortcut in a way. And then you're gonna go all the way to the end, hit one arrow key to the right, and you're gonna do slash Etsy local time and hit enter. Now at this point, you're gonna sync up the hardware clock, which is the clock inside your actual motherboard here. So do HW uh, clock, all right? So HW clock and then do dash sys TOHC. And then you're gonna do dash do dashes UTC. Hit enter. It's gonna be just synchronizing it right there and then. Then you're going to create an, uh, a, uh, a host name for your system. This could be anything. You can call yourself butt plug, fairy, you know, Arch Linux lover. Uh, I'm going to call myself overlord just because that's what my main system is going to be notified as. So here you're going to do echo and you're going to type in whatever your name is. So for me, it's overlord. And then one arrow key to the right slash Etsy. And then you're going to do slash host name. Hit enter and you're good. Now at this moment in time, you're, if you have an SSD, it's good to enable, you know, trim support. So do system CTL, all right, system control, enable fstrim.timer. 
And of course it created the sim links right there and then. Now what if you want to enable 32-bit support? Well, it's time to modify your Pac-Man configuration file, which is where you download most of your, you know, uh, packages from. So do nano dash Etsy and then do pacman.con. And now inside over here, you're gonna go all the way down. All right, all the way down. In fact, just do control W, type in multi-lib like this. And inside over here, you'll notice you have multi-lib testing. Get rid of the two pound signs before multi-lib and include. You might be like, what if I don't want to? Just do it to get the 32-bit support, okay? Okay, hit Control X, save that. And then of course, here you wanna do sudo pacman-sy. And here you'll notice it downloads the multi-lip package database. So now you know everything is good in Gucci. So hit clear, time to move on to the next few steps. Now you gotta set your root password. So here you wanna type in passwd. It's gonna ask you what's your password. I'm gonna enter mine. I'm gonna enter it again, and whoa, we got the password set. Now it's time to make a user account for you. So here you type in user add, and then you do dash M, dash G, and then of course in this situation, you wanna do uh, users, and then dash capital G, you wanna give it wheel support, storage support, and you wanna give it power control too. Hit dash S, and then of course, give it the shell. So in this case, we're gonna go with the default bin bash. And then we're gonna type in our name. So I'm gonna use my name and then hit enter. We're good. Give yourself a password as well. So do password and then the username. And of course, I'm gonna give it a password that I want right here. Enter it twice, we're good. Now in this case, we're also gonna modify this pseudo file. So again, just when we're in, it'll be an extra little bit of a, a peace of mind and ease of use. So just do this, follow my advice. Do editor equal nano, and then you wanna do vysudo. So this opens up the sudo, you know, TMP file here. And in this situation, you wanna do control W and you wanna search for percent wheel. So inside percent wheel, you wanna just get rid of this, uncomment all of it. And then down in the very bottom over here, just to also, you know, uh, add a little bit of extra layer of security just so you use the password that we created for the root account. Do default root PW. Generally your root password and people's actual username may be the same password. If you wanna keep something different just for extra security, this is where you do it. And you basically enforce that you're using the password for the root account only, not somebody's user account, period. Now it's time to install the bootloader. <laughs> so first things first, make sure that we have our EFI bars all listed. Make sure we're actually in an EFI uh, system. So again, go to mount T and then you wanna do EFI var FS and you wanna do uh, EFI var FS uh, and then do slash system, the directory firmware and then you wanna to go to EFI, EFI vars, okay? Hit enter. You can even do LS, sys, firmware, EFI, EFI vars. And as long as you see all of this, you're good. Now to install the bootloader, we do boot CTL install. And bam, there it is. The bootloader has been installed, but it's not going to be functional. We have to write the entries ourselves. So let's write the boot entry. So do clear, do nano, and then do slash boot loaders entries and then slash and just do arch. Um, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it first, just call it arch to make it easier for you. Hit arch.conf, dot .conf is important. Hit enter and you'll get this new text field. Now, how do you write a boot entry? Well, I'll walk you through it. Don't worry, buckos, I'm here for you. You wanna do title, which is the title of it. You can call this arch. You can call it Marky Mark's Fun Time, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. I'm just gonna call it arch, okay? That's all it is, arch. Now in this case, we're gonna be using Linux as the next phase, and we're gonna be typing slash VM Linux dash Linux. Now in the next phase, we're gonna be doing init RD, all right, slash init RAM FS dash Linux dot IMG. Very important you get these three lines done. Hit Control X, hit Y, and save. Now, those three lines are important, but we also need to create a line options and link to our actual like root drive where our system is stored. Now, I learned this trick from Glorious Egg Roll, so I'm gonna enter this arcane script and walk you through what happens. So inside here, we're gonna be doing echo because we're gonna be writing something to a file. We're gonna be doing uh, you know, a uh, commas, 
Uh, and then we're going to be typing in options, root equal part UUID. We're actually going to be using the ID, which is static, doesn't change. So no matter what happens with updates, this will not screw up the boot process ever. You always want to have a system that can at least boot in, right? Now inside here, you want to do capital part UUID and you want to do equal dolan sign, dollar sign right here. I won't even joke around. One bracket block ID dash S and then part UUID, all right, dash O. And then we're going to grab the value of it and space dev SDB three, which is our root directory where our system is stored. Now, of course, we're going to be doing RW and then an apostrophe to close off this string of characters we're copying into that file we just made. Now here we're going to be doing two brackets because two brackets actually adds a line to a file. One bracket straight up overwrites the entire file. So if you ever wonder why I have different brackets and the amount of it, that's why. So hit space and you want to do slash boot loader entries and that arch configuration file we made. Hit enter, and now it's the moment of truth. Go to nano, boot, loader, entries, arch, and of course, if everything's right, you'll see options, root, part UUID, that whole like ID number for that specific partition, and then RW. If that's what you're seeing, you're, you're good. Now, if you have an Intel processor or an AMD processor, you may need to install Intel U code. Again, if you follow the installation directory, the wiki, It'll guide you through all the magical fun processes, okay? So in this case, since I'm on an AMD processor, my stuff is included with the kernel, I can skip this step. Now the last step here before we boot in is figuring out what our internet situation looks like. Hit IP link and you'll notice I have some internet um, you know, adapters. So LO is loopback, ignore that. Now here you'll see that I have ENP 56S0 and then 57. So I have two different network cards on my system. I know for a fact ENP56S0 is the one I use. So again, figure out which one is your working internet connect, your internet like uh, driver, and then go off with that. To get things going though, you wanna actually enable the DHPC CD service. So you wanna do sudo pacman-s, and you wanna first install DHCPCD, and then of course hit yes install all of it, and then you can actually move on forward by enabling that for that specific uh, IP um, or that specific network system. So once you've installed that, you go to system, or sorry, sudo systemctl, and then you wanna do enable, and then you wanna enable dhcpcd add enp56s0. Again, yours may be different. And then of course, dot service. And once you hit enter, it's created the sim link and you're pretty much good to go. Then install the network manager. So do sudo pacman s and then do network manager. Yeah, it's just lowercase. So hit yes. There it is. We've installed all of network manager. And then of course do sudo systemctl enable and then the network manager dot service. And of course, everything is done there. So now if you have a different, if you have a, if you have a graphic uh, graphics card, now obviously if you got a graphics card, you may need to do something different. Now I have an Nvidia card, which means my process is the hardest one. AMD cards generally have their drivers built in, but if you're an Nvidia guy like me, then you need to install all of it on your own. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? So first things first, sudo pacman s, you wanna install Nvidia, DKMS. Remember those Linux headers we installed earlier? We're going to be using something known as the kernel module, uh, the dynamic kernel module system, which basically means we're going to be just building these modules to order, okay? Like a chef makes fresh food in a restaurant. So again, install this, then install libglvnd, and of course all of this is on the Arch Linux installation, so do NVIDIA utils, because you do want the utilities, and then of course OpenCL NVIDIA, and you also wanna have the, uh, the lib32 versions of this as well too, just in case any software calls upon it. So do lib32, libglvnd, and then do lib32, nvidia utils, lib32, uh, opencl, and then nvidia, 
And then of course, NVIDIA dash settings. Very important, you have all of this going. So this might seem long and overly drawn out, but again, we're just telling Linux what to do. Once we hit enter, it's gonna give you all of this. Uh, we're gonna hit yes. And uh, this is installing all the graphic drivers and tools that we need. It may seem like a lot that we're downloading, but again, you know, this is just the case. We're making sure every single situation is covered. All the dependencies are there as well. Okay, I did something wrong. It's giving me missing kernel headers. If it's giving you missing kernel headers, please go do sudo pacman-s linux headers. This is very important you do this, okay? Hit yes, install all of this, and then if that command did fail, you wanna just re-enter that again. You need to make sure this is working. If you don't do this, the graphic driver obviously cannot use the DKMS module. It cannot build. So that's pretty much uh, what I missed. Luckily we caught it. Again, errors can happen, but this is why like, you need to make sure you understand all these concepts, else you know, your whole system is gonna get thrown into the fucking air. Okay, so now we gotta make our init TV, we gotta generate our init RAM FS. So here we're gonna make sure we uh, enable the NVIDIA DRM stuff too. So do sudo nano, again, this is only for NVIDIA, so I'm doing it. If you don't have an NVIDIA system, thank God sometimes you can skip past this. There's a reason why people say NVIDIA stuff is annoying for Linux users, okay? So again, in this case, we're gonna be doing sudo nano slash etsy make init cpio.conf. We're gonna get into this uh, you know, file here. So we're gonna be typing in a couple things. We're gonna be enabling a couple modules. So inside where it says modules here, you wanna type in uh, NVIDIA, and especially in this order too, uh, NVIDIA mode set underscore mode set, and then NVIDIA underscore UVM, and then NVIDIA underscore DRM. So again, only specifically in this order. So hit X, hit Y, and just save that. Now you also wanna make sure these are loaded during boot time. So do sudo nano slash boot loader entries, the, you know, whatever your configuration is called. And then after the options line, right after RW, so get to the very end of this line, and you wanna just type in uh, NVIDIA, uh, dot dash drm dot mode set equals one. Then of course you need to make a hook for Pac-Man. So every time you update your NVIDIA drivers, you wanna make sure it's building the new drivers and it also updates the RAMFS. If you don't do this, you're gonna to come to a blank screen and the graphic driver won't load. So now you wanna do sudo nano, or sorry, first you wanna do sudo make directory etsy Pacman dash D and then hooks. So type this in first, then you want to do sudo nano etsy pacman D hooks and then call this one nvidia dot hook. So inside here, we're going to be writing a little script together just to tell the system to tell the package manager what to do. So first things first, we're going to create these big brackets here and we're going to be typing in the word trigger. So what triggers this to even start? Well, first off, an operation, install, another operation, uh, upgrade, another operation uh, could be uh, remove. And then you wanna do type, package, and then of course the target for this is NVIDIA. And it'll cover anything NVIDIA related. So two big brackets again, and what is the action? So the action upon that trigger is, the dependencies first is make init CPIO, which is your RAMFS, init RAMFS, when in the post transaction, and then of course, finally, in the executive, uh, what it executes is slash user, slash bin, make init uh, CPIO, CPIO, again, be very careful with how you type this, dash capital P for every kernel involved. Once that's done, hit yes, hit save, and now you should be able to boot into your installation and get your actual thing up and running. So here you wanna type in exit, U mount, unmount everything, so R and slash MNT. And then of course, type in the words reboot. Now here, ladies and gentlemen, once you're rebooting the system, you can basically pull out the flash drive because you don't need it anymore. You've actually gotten to the last stages if you made it this far. Oh, look at that boy, certified hood moment. A 
Okay, so we're at the login. You might be noticing some systems have this issue. Mine has the Thunderbolt problem. But once you get to this situation right here, it's gonna ask you for your login. So remember those user accounts we made? Type in your login, type in your password. You're into your own system, buckos. Okay, so now you might be like, how do I get this to look good? It looks like this. I, I, how am I gonna run video games? How am I gonna talk on Discord? Fret not, young Padawan, let me guide you. So now you want to install Zorg. Now there's uh, there's there's display there's display servers, right? There's Zorg, and then there's Wayland. I don't really use Wayland. I use Zorg. Okay. So again, feel free if you want to go down the Wayland route. I'm just going to teach people how to use Zorg. Okay. So do sudo pacman s, and you want to install Zorg server like so, uh, and then you want to install Zorg dash apps. Zorg x init Zorg uh, sorry not dash Zorg Zorg twm and you want to do Zorg x clock and then x term so once you hit enter you might say you're reinstalling some things just go with the defaults hit yes and uh, you'll install everything you need Zorg related so once this is good you can actually start the Zorg server and see if everything works so do start x now, fingers crossed, screen's gonna go blank. Now, if you get some clocks showing up on your screen, doesn't do it for me, I think it's because of my capture card. That means it works. So find the biggest window you can, type in the words exit, and you'll be brought right back here. So to the old terminal. Now, here's where we're gonna install a desktop like a uh, manager. And you can pick anything you want. There's GNOME, for instance. Uh, this is just the graphical user interface we're picking. Really, anything is your option. There are designs for Windows users, for Mac users, for people who don't even want classic Windows managers. They want tiling designs. So again, the world is your oyster. I'm a basic guy. So I'm just going to install Plasma because I think it looks nice. So let's do sudo pacman s and do Plasma and then do sddm because you need a login service. So it, uh, put in your password. And again, right here, we're gonna be hitting uh, just the defaults. And again, uh, just defaults. And then of course, even more defaults. And then more defaults, more defaults, and hit yes. Again, nothing wrong with the default. If it works, it works. If your system requires some changes, you can go back through the installation and change dependencies if you need to. So now you want to enable your uh, login manager to so do system CTL pseudo system CTL enable sddm.service. So again, once that's enabled, all you have to do is finally just hit reboot. Now, once you get into the main system, you might be like, whoa, it looks quite simple, Muda. Now the option here is that you kind of have to do is you can hit the start button, which is this cool little like penguin three dot arrow thing in the bottom left. And of course here you can type in terminal, right, into the search field and you'll find something known as xterm. Hit enter and you'll see this really basic looking terminal. The next bit is to go sudo pacman s and you can type in console with a K. Uh, and then of course you can install a bunch of other things. So do you need, for instance, a web browser? Well, you can get Firefox. Do you wanna get a file manager? Do Dolphin. Do you wanna get a text editor? Type in Kate. Do you want to get Discord as well? Type in Discord. Hey, do you want to download Steam for those video games? Type in Steam. And of course, this is just you telling Linux what you want. Hit enter, it'll ask you for a root password, and bam, just hit yes, install all of these things on the go. So that's the beautiful part about Linux. It's actually very safe to install a lot of these packages because they're all maintained, they're all verified by a community of people who put a lot of effort into making sure this stuff works for you out of the box. Now with that one command, in less than a minute, we've installed our entire web browser, we've installed Steam, and we've even installed Discord as a you know messaging client. So again, this is just the beginning. Now, of course, the next step is to obviously make your system for you. So you can install new configurations, you can install new programs, and you can get this up and running. Now, of course, I've shown you before, installing your Steam page, your Steam account is no problem. Wire, fire it up, go to file, go to settings, enable Steam play, and you can play a lot of these Windows games on your system. You can up dis you can get Discord up and running. For most people, using Linux this way is quite easy. Um, obviously, that installation process probably took you a little bit of time, and you may need to go back in this video and rewatch a couple steps. But if you understand what happened, we basically went through the entire process of an installer 
just by us. And by doing this, you kind of learn the components and how software interacts, at least in a Unix system. So now that you've managed to follow this guide so far, by now you have one of the hardest Linux installations up and running. So you can tell any Fedora tipper on Reddit to go fuck themselves and enjoy using the most elitist version of Linux the way that you ever wanted to. Again, feel free to go down your path and if you end up breaking something again, well, there's no harm in starting from scratch. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it, I am out.